God bless you, everybody. This is Brother Darren. Uh, good afternoon from um, Hebrews 9, verse 2017, and John 3, verse 16, YouTube. Um, I'm going to share something with you now. Um, it's a little bit of a testimony uh, and a bit of a revelation. Uh, I've entitled it Jesus Christ, London Lifeboat Day and Salvation. So the other day I'm walking through Victoria train station. I'm on my way to work and it's about 10 past 8 in the morning. Now, as I've come through the barriers, there were representatives, um, donation collect collectors for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. They were trying to collect for the organisation. Uh, it was Tuesday the 30th of April 2019 and it was Royal um, London Lifeboat Day. Now, in regards to the, the institutional reorganisation, in 2015, they saved on average 22 people a day. And as soon as I saw them collecting for the organisation, instantly I went to go and give some money. It was just like something in my spirit just told me to. There was a deeper significance or symbolism behind it all. But as I've given my pound and I took this sticker, as you can see before me, crumpled up as it is, which is ironic, um, I stood and watched for some time as commuters walked past of all different races, backgrounds, ages and genders. Now, barely anybody that I saw dropped any money at all in the donation collections. Now, it might well have been that some people didn't have the money or they were in a real rush. But regardless, we know that some people just didn't give because they just couldn't be bothered. And some people just don't like giving money to charity or some people might be under financial pressure, whatever it might be. But in general, in general, I know some people just walk past and just totally ignored giving to this organisation. Now, as I was watching all this, I stood there and I kind of contemplated and I couldn't help thinking that when it comes to Jesus Christ, it's exactly the same for some people. People walk past or ignore or don't believe, not knowing that there's going to come a day in time where there's going to be a reckoning for their soul and for eternal life. And, you know, they make excuses or just don't have the offering to give towards Christ. Or they don't believe because of deception and iniquity that has come on the world. So, you know, that was something for us, or is something for us all to consider. Who is Christ to you? If Christ was standing there, would you walk past and ignore what about your soul? What about that day of judgment? I'm going to move on to something else. Now, I've got an article that was taken from raptureready.com on the 3rd of May. And what happened was two boys skipped school. They went swimming and they got in trouble with the waves. Now, they prayed and they were saved by a boat named Amen, which came out to them. I'll pick up from... Um, uh, another link that I found direct to the article. This is taken from actionnewsajax.com and I think you can see the Twitter feed there. Stranded in the middle of the ocean, two hashtag Florida teens began to pray. A godsend in the form of a boat, the Amen. Their incredible story of survival. The boys begin to pray. I cried out. If you really do have a plan for us, like, come on, just bring something, Smith said. Then a boat sailing from South Florida to New Jersey spotted the teens in distress. I started swimming towards it. I was like, I'm going to get this boat. Just stay here. I'm going to get this boat. We are going to live, Brown said. Their prayers were answered in the form of a boat, a godsend, named the Amen. The first words that came out of my mouth were, God is real. The men in the boat brought the teens on board and carried them safely to shore. The teens are thanking God and the men who saved them. There's no other reason, no other explanation in the world other than God, Smith said.
Now I'm going to take you to another thing that I just found today, literally, um, in regards to an American lifeguard called Eddie Aikau. Now what it says was, Eddie Ryan McCarney Aikau was a well-known American lifeguard and surfer. As the first lifeguard at Woomea Beach on the island of Ahau, he saved over 500 people and became famous for surfing the Big Hawaiian Surf winning several awards, including the 1977 Duke uh, Kahana Moko Invitational Surfing Championship. And you can see that Google have decided to honour him today, um, you know, with a bit of a animated mural. And down here on Cena, it says, Google Doodle honours legendary surfer Eddie Alcow, saviour of hundreds of lives. Now, how ironic is it today that I go to post this post and um, we would have Eddie I. Cow as the, um, you know, the uh, the link that Google have got up there that they're kind of promoting today. OK, and. The other thing I was also going to say is. In regards to a testimony, um, also in this week, uh, I was making my way um, home. I'd had dinner with a friend. I stopped to speak to a young homeless person and I got incredibly sick. Now, as I got sick, I'm going back through Victoria Station and I'm so sick that I need to, you know, get to a lavatory. And... Um, the workplace that I work at, we've got people of all different races that are there. And there's an English guy that's there. He's a little bit eccentric, but a nice guy. And he invited me to go and watch Arsenal one day in his sports bar. Now, some Christians don't believe probably that you can go to a bar or a pub with somebody. Um, some don't believe you can drink. Um, but, you know, my understanding from reading the Bible passages is that you're not to be intoxicated. Anyway, I literally only went in and had a juice or a Coke. But this guy knew I was a Christian. And because I gave him my word that I would go to watch Arsenal with him, you know, he wanted me to come um, to this sports bar. As a result of going to the sports bar, I knew where the toilets were in, uh, were in there. So as I was so sick in the station on my way back home uh, the other day, I could only think of this sports bar um, and where those lavatory were, where that lavatory was. I give God thanks because I managed to get to the bathroom and I was ill in the bathroom. But because of my love and my understanding of the word, you know, my love for a fellow man and, and deciding to honour the word which Christ gives us to honour our promises, I went and I was saved you know, by being able to use a bathroom. So I give God thanks. But I'm just going to end on a scripture now in regards, and it pretty much sums up, you know, everything that I've been talking about in regards to Jesus Christ, London Lifeboat Day and salvation. And it's reading from the Gospel of uh, Matthew, chapter 8. And I'm going to read from um, verse 23 um, down to... Um, verse 27. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marvelled, saying, What manner of, of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, I'm just going to finish there. But as a bit of a recap or summary, salvation is in Jesus Christ. He is, you know, like that um, lifeboat that is at sea. He's like those donation collectors reaching out to anybody that will, will accept, receive and believe. But many choose to ignore him. My message is to anybody who's unsaved, don't choose to ignore Christ. 
the father, because he was faithful and obedient, allowed him to, to rise from the dead and for all sins to be cast on him. And as John 3.16 says, if we believe on him, we should not perish, but have everlasting life, and we shall be saved from judgment. God bless you all.